Good morning. I'm here to talk a little about, bit about um, the saving of and collecting seed. It's a bit of a passion of mine. If you come to my house, you'll always find there's some seed sitting on the bench that I've collected from somewhere or from my garden. It's important that you collect seed from what I call open pollinated seed or non-hybrid seed. So this is traditionally what they call heritage seed. The garden behind me is all um, seed that I've grown from seed that I've collected, so it's all open pollinated seed. You may be keen to collect some seed from some fruit that you've bought at the supermarket. This is a good, very good exa example of a capsicum, but I actually don't know whether this is an open pollinated seed. It's more likely that it's a hybrid and the seed won't germinate. So it's, I, I personally think it's very important that you actually know the source of where the plant um, has come from that you're trying to grow. Hybrid seed often is not fertile and won't germinate. This seed here is some seed that I've collected from uh, capsicum bought in the supermarket. And one of the ways that you can test to see if seed will germinate is when you put it into water Anything that floats to the top normally won't germinate and you'll see with this seed that a lot of that seed has floated to the top. So that's an indication to me that that seed is not going to germinate. Often when you buy fruit or vegetables from the supermarket it's immature when they pick it. When I, when I bought this capsicum on the, on the rack in the supermarket they're all very uniform size. All look very similar so I'd say that's just my indication that it's probably a hybrid and a lot of those that are what's grown commercially are from hybrid seed now so in the garden here if I was going to collect some seed I'd be making sure that I'm, I'm getting it from the best plants I've got a bit of a range of seed here that I've actually collected uh, these are what they call it's a perennial um, spinach called Egyptian spinach you can see the pods are still closed what I'm actually waiting for is the pods to start popping like they have there and then you will see all that mature seed, the dark seed, is, is ready and that can be now, it's been dried, it's ready to be bagged up and put in the fridge. The other one that I've got here is some okra. These I've let mature on the bush. So now you can see we've actually got mature seed. That's there, those dark seed are ready, they can be stored and can be planted now. These are snake beans that have dried and matured on the plant. I've now collected these, bought them in, had them on the bench making sure that they are fully dry. I now, what I would do would take them out of the pod and put them into a paper bag or a plastic bag and up here in uh, Northern Australia, I'd be storing them in the, the fridge to make sure that you keep them as good viable seed. This is a loofah, um, which I've grown in my garden here. If I shake this, you'll hear there's actually seed also in it. So what I'm just doing, the seed is, is totally dry. It's actually dried on the vine. And I've collected it this morning. Inside, you will find there's seeds. The dark seed is the good mature seed. This corn here was um, planted from this cob here, or I've just dried this whole cob, and then all I've done is just break off, bring the whole cob out, and then I just break off the seed and plant them straight into the ground. You'll find when you buy commercial seed that it's normally dipped in a fungicide. You know, I. I knew this was a good crop, it grew well. I don't think you need to have those seed dipped in fungicide. These are actually tough plants that I know will perform. So I just happily plant this seed as it is, straight off the cob. I've got a rock melon here from my garden. These are the seed, these mature seed here that I'm going to collect. And the first step is to wash the seed. What you'll see is that there's a gel, I call it a gel, but there's a coating around the seed. And if you don't get that off, it's actually a germination inhibitor. So with this process, 
often you can, the old traditional way was to actually ferment the seeds. I've found over the years that uh, cantaloupes, watermelons, those sort of seed, I don't need to ferment. The only ones that I do still use the fermentation process for is tomatoes, which I will show you later. So the first step in, in storing seed is to wash this seed very thoroughly, which I'm about to do now. The next, next step is to actually dry it. So I'd be putting this on to some paper towel and then just leaving it up in the warm conditions up here in North Australia. You, you only need to do it for a couple of days and, the, and normally the seed is dry, but you just keep an eye on it and make sure that it is dry before you store it. With tomatoes, I find to make sure that you get rid of that germination inhibitor, that gel that's around the fruit, I actually put the seed through what they call a fermentation process. These are cherry tomatoes. Normally I find cherry tomatoes will, will germinate pretty easily. You don't need to do this, but other tomato varieties you do need to do this fermenting process. So what I do is just squeeze out the seed. Then what I would do was just add a small amount of water to make sure so you can, there's enough water in there to keep that fermentation process going. Put the lid on lightly and I would just put that on the kitchen bench and you'll be able to dry them and store them and they'll be ready for planting. Another seed that's really easy to collect is the pumpkin seed. These are a Kent seed. All I'm doing is remove it, removing these from the pumpkin and then I'll just give them a, a, a wash, put them on um, paper towel and let them dry. I've also got some watermelon seed that I collected here and you can see in this that it was not quite mature when I actually collected this watermelon. So I've actually got, I know some of this seed's not going to germinate. I've got some white seed in amongst the darker seed. So you can see the white seed there that won't germinate. These darker seed will be the ones I know will germinate. Once these seeds are dry, we need to collect them up and bag them up. You see the seed has been sitting on the bench in my um, kitchen for about 10 days. It's well and truly ready to um, collect. Put it into a bag, seal the bag, write on the bag what it is. And this is West Indian Gherkins. I'll label it with the date and I'll put Jenny's Garden so I know where it's come from. Just to finish in our uh, seed harvesting session, um, these are the uh, tomato seeds that I put aside for a couple of days to ferment. So it's two couple of days later. What I'm just going to do now is wash these seeds. I'll just give them a rinse so they're all nice and clean. They've got rid of, rid of that gel that was around them that would have inhibited the germination of the seed. And what I'm also going to do is just see if these seed are likely to germinate by seeing what floats to the top. So I'll just put a bit of water in there. And as you can see, those seed are all sinking to the bottom. So I'm very happy that most of these seeds will germinate. So this is the end of our seed harvesting session. This is one of the great things I like about gardening is being able to propagate plants and you can share these plants that you've propagated yourself.